Hello, this is a street in my hometown, Gongju. And we just came out of um, eating ice cream. And what was the flavor we had? Uh, my mom is an alien. My mom is an alien. And it's, this pizza place is one of our favorites that we always come back to whenever we visit our town. So we're gonna grab a pizza later. And I'm here with my sister today. And we're walking down this street. This is the street where we used to do everything. Um, so I thought I'd film this and show you what it's like on a Monday, sorry, Sunday, Sunday afternoon in South Korea. And as you can see, the road is intense. There's the bus driver. And yeah, we thought we'd just talk about living in Korea compared to living in Australia. Um, and how it how it compares. So here, the cars won't give way. So just have to be very careful. You have to look to your left. Yes, yes. Um, the cars are on the right, and the driver's seats are on the left in the cars, which is um flipped from south from Australia yes so yep <laughs> anyway so we grew up in this this area it's quite strange to be back because some buildings are gone new buildings are in but some things are exactly the same the sky's quite blue so if I'm frank, the sky isn't as pretty as the sky in Australia. It's a lot more grey. But it's like nice blue. Not like a vivid blue, but just like pastel. Yep. And it's a, it's a bit of a warm day. Yesterday was quite overcast, but today... Sun's out. And in Korea, it's a lot more humid compared to Australia. Um, especially some cities, yep. And the, in Korea, the weather's flipped compared to Australia. So when it's summer in Korea, it's winter in Australia. And when it's winter, when it's winter in Korea, it's summer in Australia. So right now it's getting colder in Australia, but it's getting warmer in South Korea. Okay. Three minutes in and Running out of things to say already. <laughs> How do you feel about being back in this suburb? It feels strange. It feels like this is very familiar, and it is. It's a very easy road. We used to, um, as you can see, um, there's a lot of vegetables, fruits out, and. This is, um, you know, very Korean. Yeah, this is like, this is some seafood. Lots of cafes in Korea. It's so, so embarrassing because everyone's staring. Like, oh well. The drinks, there's so many cafes because Koreans like to go in and get a nice Americano and just chat. Hmm. I am, I think, cold coffee. Korea superior, warm coffee, Australia superior. And of course, where I'm from, the city of Melbourne, how can any other country or city beat our coffee? But yeah, it's um, seeing all these small stalls out every day, these um, people that run these businesses, they come out very early in the morning and they stay out till pretty late, until past sunset, so it is um, both somewhat encouraging and sad to see. It's encouraging because they are hard-working people um, who are out um, trying to make a living every day, and that's admirable. But you know, um, I think it's a bit sad, especially with COVID 
that's gone by. I have noticed less people in Korea when we went into the city yesterday overall. And yeah, hopefully business picks up and it's been picking up, I think. I have to talk over this because there's music playing in the background and I can't get a copyright strike, but I don't think it matters at all because I can't, I don't have enough views or subscribers to make money off any of this, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, this is, um... So how do you think growing up in Korea is different to growing up in Australia? children can have um, while I was growing up is the number of after school academies that people go to. I think in Australia that's so much less whereas in Korea you finish school and you go to so many different academies and then if you learn uh, outside of school like constant learning but I think there's much more freedom uh, to grow up as a child in Australia. Mm. Yes, and relevantly, this is um, what's called a mumbangu, and everything you need for school is in a mumbangu. Could you tell us what's in there? Uh, if you want to get, like, the school has like a list of things that you need to bring for certain classes. If you go there, you can find all sorts of stationery, also like souvenirs, hair accessories, even like food containers, like really fun stuff, toys, and yeah. Or lollies as well. Like we used to go there all the time and buy things. Hmm. Yeah. It's. I think one of the things that I enjoy the most about going to school in Korea, uh, going there before the semester, each semester, and buying uh, new stationery, new books. You know, I like the fresh smell of paper in my hands. The subway in South Korea, subway is still pretty new in Korea, but it's very pristine and clean. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so there were, I believe, more apartments that used to be there before, but they were older and I think something new is being built there at the moment. One thing that I felt... One thing that I've noticed growing up in Australia and uh, seeing other kids on the streets uh, in South Korea and from my experience from living in Korea, there's a big culture around and naturally around um, having close relationships with your neighbors. And I, I did ponder on this question for quite a while. I was wondering why that's the case. And you know, even though Korea's population is much larger than Australia's, how much larger exactly? Twice. Yep. Twice as much as Australia. Yes, and you know, Korea's land is what uh, at least forty times less. Than yes, forty times less. Australia. Forty times less than Australia. So you know, the land is obviously small, so we can't have these houses, the luxury of. Uh, single houses on the streets with a nice garden, a pool in the backyard. So most Korean housings, they go up instead of spreading out. So there are a lot of apartments and I think I was uh, going back to my question about why uh, you build such close relationships and close friendships with your neighbors is because I think maybe there's something about uh, living in the same building and, you know, sharing the same walls, the same same main entrance that makes um makes it feel more whole yeah. and usually you grow up with your neighbors like we are one of like our closest friends were in the same like, building like our apartment blocks have different numbers like we were part of one number of building and like you know the people in that particular building really well but you go to the same school because you live in the same area hmm. and moms become really good friends Exactly, and you end up sharing a lots of um, great food. And what is this? Looks very familiar, but 
Yeah. So this shop has Australian products. Discounted apparently. I've never been in here, I think it's new. Usually they have these uh, flower... What would you call that? Pahan. Sorry? Pahan. Pahan. It's, it's like a... Uh, it's something that people gift to a shop that opens. And they're sometimes seen at weddings, funerals. Um, but yeah, when, when there's something like that outside, it's usually because a shop's just opened up. So, Korea is a very, I believe, a trendy country. So, you know, fashion trends, food trends especially, they come and go. So what I've noticed this time coming to this street is that a lot of the restaurants, cafes, shops that I visited last time are just gone. Yeah. And mm, it's funny, it's funny. I um <laughs> But yeah, these apartments and that's a bus right there. How many people would you think fit in one of those apartment blocks? Uh, probably about 20 floors and 6 across, so maybe like 500. 500 she says. I think so, around there. So yeah, you know, and sharing the lift, there's a lift stairs. Um, and yeah, I think that's, that's what I do like about growing up in Korea. That's one thing that's different because everything isn't as spread out. You can walk to so many places. Like we've been walking down this street for 12 minutes and we've already seen so much. And in Australia, you know, to go to all these different shops, you'd probably have to drive. Look, there's a butcher there. There's a uh, makeup shop, a photography studio, a clothing store, a pool club, um, a piano studio, a hairdresser, a library, and you know, that's like 10 shops in one small uh, building. So yeah, and we have a telephone provider, I think, here on the other side. So as you can see, uh, things are a lot tighter here. So in my opinion, Korea is a lot more efficient how they spend time it's a lot more fast paced the driving the walking especially the uh, speaking but there's pros and cons for both I do feel more at ease in Australia compared to living here I feel like um, sometimes interacting with this country makes me a little anxious at times just because of how busy it is and I, I, that's because I'm more used to the laid back uh, calm, slow, take a breath every minute lifestyle. Do you agree? Yeah, pretty fast paced here. Yeah, people are probably very confused right now because there's this um, guy wearing two masks and sunny, he's walking down the street, being very loud and annoying. Anyway, this is the street that I used to run down, trip over, cut my knee, bleed, look around. This is a famous Korean bakery. Yes, this is. It's a chain, so you get to see a lot of these around town. And really great bread. Mm. We'll definitely be getting uh, some food from there later. But yeah, the food culture in Australia is, uh, sorry, the food culture in Korea is very big. Could you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, you, like you don't even have to go to a well-known famous food place to have a good meal. Like you could walk into any, any one of them on the street and you're like probably guaranteed to have some great food. That's what I've been amazed at. We just go in and have something and it's so, so delicious at a good price. 
and like so diverse and you could find anything you want on a street like you don't mm. even have to like search for it and look how colorful this is what we've noticed is it is spring yes and maybe it's just me but the flowers in korea seem so they're just so much more saturated they just pop in my eyes but yeah what's what's been what are you looking forward to eating the most this time around uh, i think i'd like to try some fried chicken yes we haven't had that yet uh, or like street food tigim which is like fried things you can get fried squid or fried like it, fried potatoes. Yeah. Yes. There's, there's so many things I've overlooked. I don't know where to start. Mm. Exactly. And coffee in Korea, I think it's still pretty big, but you know, Koreans like to really uh, stylize their drinks. So, as you can see, there's a drink called an Americano, and which would be just like a uh, long black. And I'll just read some of these out to you. This is like a cafe latte. Hazelnut latte, caramel macchiato, a cafe mocha, a lot of drinks. <laughs> but, um, yes. I think you're hearing a lot of honking in the background and I've mentioned in the other video that Korean drivers and especially bus drivers aren't as patient in, as drivers in Australia are, so you have to be very careful when crossing the road here. And the traffic lights. Fun fact about the traffic lights, they don't make a uh, beeping noise to tell you that it's turned green and they don't blink when it's red either. They instead blink they they just the green comes on and then it blinks for a bit usually there's a number under the blinking green light that's a countdown i'd like to show you but there aren't any here that's some um, learn the guitar and drums up there yes we did we had a amazing uh music teacher yeah, we're and, gonna see soon mm. yeah really great person he is one of the coolest people uh, we know we've met in the past and we've known him for more than 10 years now so every time we come back to Korea you know it's like going to a place that we haven't been for a while but because you see the same people again for me it doesn't feel that long yeah. when I'm actually here feels a bit like time traveling like we get on the plane and the plane is a time traveling transportation device that sends us back in time and it feels like I've only been here um, yesterday but yeah while we're in Australia of course it doesn't feel like that it feels like a very long time and especially with COVID yeah. it did feel a lot longer it's crazy trying to get here mm. but we are here now this is the street that goes up to our school Yes, we used to go to a primary school around here for a little while. Yeah, and then there's also our Taekwondo training center. Mm. Both of us did Taekwondo when we were young. Uh, that's, I think, also a Korean part of yeah. Korean culture. Martial arts, there's uh, two big ones in Korea. Taekwondo and Hapkido. And I think while I was in a and while I was living in Korea, that was my other highlight of growing up here, you know. Because it wasn't, it was like as soon as you finished school, you could go. And this is like when you're in the lower year levels. Um, <laughs> keep going? Yeah. We'll keep walking up. I yeah. think we go to our Taekwondo and we walked up here like 10 million times. Yes. We used to live around here, very close. Let's give you a scan of the area another yeah. cafe another cafe for all the coffee lovers out there and you know these sweet drinks are quite amazing they're yeah. so like flavorful five dollars mm. you're, you're guaranteed to have a good drink 
But yeah, uh, as I was saying, part of Korean culture, I think, is also, you know, when you're in the lower grades, you don't finish as late, thankfully, and that means you get a bit more flexible, uh, flexibility in doing some of your hobbies like instruments or martial arts and you know that was what I look forward to every day um, at the end of a school day to go to Taekwondo ice cream shop but you don't have to, there's no one in there so you just buy it yourself oh wow yeah. I have never seen this before but yeah we've been up these stairs quite often and sadly, my uh, Taekwondo coach He's actually moved So he doesn't actually um, run this place And it's Sunday, so they're not open anymore uh, It's literally the same Hmm So yeah But yeah, my, my Taekwondo coach is doing amazing in a different place um, and he's still training lots of students and teaching them how to, you know. I think Taekwondo isn't just about martial arts, there's a psychological element. I think what I remember is, oh, so just for reference, I am a, um, I got up to, I guess now it'd be a Black belt e second dan. And e dan. I'm black belt first dan. But yeah, so so I knew I knew that coach for a while, and you know, it was also about uh, learning respect for the sports, but also for your peers, for your opponents, and your parents. Hmm. And also, it's about patience and defending yourself. Not about fighting. It's about what to do if you're in a situation where you're falling down, how to like protect yourself, how to fall well, which is cool. Yes, exactly. So I am all for Taekwondo. If anyone's interested, um, I highly recommend it. Yeah, find a Korean instructor if you can. Mm. Yeah, it is very hot. It's about, I think, nearly 30 degrees today. Yeah, I'm sweating in my mask. Ooh. It's a bit gross. Where? There is a bit of a nice view here that I'm tempted to show you. Oh. It's just a higher angle. Hmm. But hopefully this video gives you, you know, teaches you a bit it's more about... It's very authentic. It's like, it's not a touristy area. It's where the people live. Hmm. Yes, exactly. This is like a kindergarten. And if we keep going, we can go to our elementary school. Where goes that car? So here we go. Who's going to win? The car or me? I think I won because, um... I crossed first. I think, I can't remember, but maybe we go through there and the school comes up. Yes, yes, yeah, you're right. Exactly. So there used to be one of those mumbangus over there in that corner. Oh, it's not there. Yeah, it's gone. Oh, there yeah. used to be a guy there who worked really there for a while. Really cranky man, but... <laughs> cranky? Kind of, but cranky, but efficient. Yes, yes. Always knew exactly what we needed. <laughs> hmm. And just a fun fact, this brand is Hyundai. And I yeah. hear a lot of um, it's sometimes, not yeah, sometimes um, a bit um, incorrect pronunciations all over the place. Especially, it's a bit funny when uh, it's kind of okay when you know some stranger says it, but I've heard a lot of dealers at dealerships say you Hyundai. Work for Hyundai, don't say Hyundai. <laughs> but yeah, the right also, pronunciation is Hyundai. Also, it's Korean. Hmm. Kia and Hyundai is Korean. Yes. Don't fight me on that. But yeah, this is like, I think this is where, you know, 
we're like at a central point where we've just walked past a busy street in the span of 20 minutes we've gone into i've shown you a couple of uh, shops a lots lots of shops actually apartments and on the other side is a school that is our school and also how weird that the cars are parked in the middle yes so a lot of apartments here as you can see so you know these kids they'd wake up go to school go to uh do taekwondo or go to another um do another hobby and then if they on a, on a weekend um hopefully they have time to go out to the shops but yeah as you can see all in the span of half an hour you can do so many things and not be bored so because we moved to australia when we were still young that uh, change wasn't as shocking but i think uh, maybe for our parents who are a bit older um, when they move to australia it's a, clearly a different lifestyle and some people can enjoy that but that's just the difference mm. it gets really slippery when it snows mm. oh it's closed yes so i believe the schools i've noticed all they fenced it all off because of covid yes let's let's well, have a it so it says um COVID-19 Yeah Yep We can't Strangers I can't go in But I'm not a stranger Oh maybe we thought It's okay um, It's a Sunday so We don't really have to go in But Playgrounds are pretty big In Korea as well So After school you know, I have fond memories of. Personally, I, I have memories of being on this playground, but not as much because this one isn't the closest one to my apartment. We had a playground right in front of our house, apartment, um, because we were on the first floor. So, my mom, when she was in the kitchen looking out the window, she could actually see the playground and see us playing. So, when it was dinner time, she'd call our names. We'd come in, eat, and. This is bringing it all back. I'm getting flashes of past memories, nostalgia, uh, and my time in Korea. And hopefully, yeah, this video really gives us, gives you a taste of what it's like to grow up in Korea. You know, this isn't going to give you the full picture, but um, hopefully you find this interesting. Do you have anything to add? Um, I think we're very privileged to have experienced two different lifestyles also privileged to be here right now mm, yes 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 traveling during covid we're extremely grateful thankfully everything went as planned you know it was as i've mentioned countless times it was complicated a lot of paperwork um <laughs> yeah, a lot and, of waiting. yes and i think it's really at the end of it all tested our patience but taught us perseverance and um to be more patient And in Korea, I think what what I find most beautiful about traveling to other countries is seeing the different um, flora and fauna, like these trees. I'm, I'm sure uh, there will be some overlaps between Australia and Korea, but those, um, I don't know what to describe them, like they look like miniature versions of big trees. And I didn't see those in Australia very often, but here, they're just right outside people's windows. We'll go down the other way, I think, yeah. this time. And the no roads are narrower in most streets. And that results in people becoming better drivers in the end, I think. <laughs> so personally, I'm too... Um, anxious and worried about driving in Korea so I don't drive here we and public transport is quite advanced yeah so advanced so frequent clean easy cheap very like everything is efficient and well planned out here mm. yeah so if you're uh, if you're wanting an efficient lifestyle a fast-paced efficient lifestyle I recommend South Korea for sure And this is just a convenience store. Alright. I think we're going to leave it there because we're going to come out of the same street we um, entered to go into the Taekwondo Jang. But 
what is your overall impression of coming back to the uh, your childhood neighborhood? Uh, I feel like everything. I remember everything as a bit bigger. Like now, I come back here and it doesn't seem as big as I remember it. I think when I was younger. Oh, this is where I fell when I was in first grade. It was raining, and then I tripped, and now I have this child on my nose. Anyway. Where was it exactly? Somewhere here. I was like doing something stupid with the umbrella, and I full on slipped. Oh no! Yeah. And it was this place. Yeah. Anyway, so it's like. It's really amazing, I think. We come back and it feels like, oh, we made it. Mm. Um, this is where we grew up. This is where it all started. And like, we've, we're doing what we love in life. And yeah, it feels pretty good. Mm. Too. Yeah. Everything seems a little bit smaller. And maybe it's because I have grown up. And, mm. um, yeah. And uh, if you go up there, it's the Unan Mountain. Yes, that's just one more thing that I want to add. There's a um, mountain there that you can hike. And I think it takes about an hour, do you think, to go yeah, up and down? Yeah. Or oh, maybe longer. Longer, a little longer than an hour. Um, it's too I hot stink. for us to do that right now. <laughs> um, but you know, um, there's a slope as well. And when it snows, the snow builds up, you know. Yeah. So we used to actually... And it freezes. Yeah, so we used to like... Slide. Uh, yeah, we used to slide down. We, we'd make boxes at, like into sleighs and then come down. Quite yes. dangerous. But yeah, again, you know, Apartment, school, and a mountain in your backyard. Like how? And a public bath. Yeah, public public bathroom, which is um normally called a public bath, not public bathroom. Yes, 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 bath. Uh, in Korea, it's called either a jimjilbang, which is also it also has a sauna. When it has a sauna, it's called a jimjilbang, and that one I think it's just called a sauna. Oh, but that one actually ironically doesn't have a sauna. That one's just a public bath. But yeah, this is where we started. Uh, we went up those stairs to get to the school. And... Hmm. For me, it's always... Even in Australia, it's always, I think, nice to return to your uh, childhood streets. Because, you know, these memories if I never come back here I don't think I'd be uh, thinking about these things and I lose memories of them and uh, you know these are stories that I want to share and great I'm filming this as well because yeah. I'll have it forever now it's good to like stay grounded and remember your roots and be thankful for like, who helped you along the way hmm exactly we've already mentioned our uh, music teacher our taekwondo coach yeah. and that's just you know a couple out of a hundred people that have really helped our journey and helped us um, um, have a great life in Australia. So very grateful that we're here and... It says, um, don't chuck rubbish out. Yes. The camera. The camera is watching. Yes. yes. Yeah, I'll keep filming this trip so you'll see a lot of, a lot more different places around uh, this city and other cities in Korea as well. But yeah, thank you for watching. Um, and we'll leave it there. Signing off.